Good morning, Redeemer Church family. It's indeed a pleasure to be in the house of worship just once more. It's, it's our kind of joy just to be with you again, because I was out for a while, but we just thank God that he brought us back safe, and to God be the glory. Our lesson this morning is called to explain. When we are speak, talk, speaking God's word, we should be able to know it well enough to explain it, because we come in encounter with somebody else that may not know what God's word is all about, so explaining it would be the best benefit, the best way of doing it. Before we get started with our lesson, I feel it fitting to go before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, as I come to you this morning, God Jesus, I give you thanks, Father. I thank you, God. I thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you. I look back to where you brought me from. And God, I give you praise. God, I glorify your name this morning, God, in the precious name of Jesus. God, I thank you, God, because you are all saving, God. God, you didn't have to do it, Jesus, but you did. Father, I lay on the bed of affliction, God, and you saw fit to raise me up again. God, you didn't have to do it, Jesus, but you did, and I thank you for it, God. I thank you from the depths of my heart, Jesus. Not only for me, God, but for my family. Not only for my family there, Jesus, but for all those who are sick and afflicted. I ask you right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, to have mercy, God. Have mercy upon us, God. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Father, to have mercy upon us, God. God, I'm asking you, please look upon this world, God. Look upon this pandemic, Jesus. God, I know you are a deliverer, and I know you are a healer, God. This give us the patience, God, to wait on you for you to do it in your time. Not our time, Lord Jesus, but yours. We ask you, Father, to this bless and keep. God, there are so many deaths in the community. There's sickness all around, God. But, Father, we know, Jesus, we know this morning, God, that you are a healer and you are a deliverer. And without you, there is nothing can be done. So, Father, we praise your name, God. We bless your holy name right now, God, in the name of Jesus, and we give you thanks, God. We thank you, Father, because you didn't have to do it, God, but you did. God, you have mercy upon us, God. You went to the cross, Jesus, just for our sins, God, and we thank you for it, Father, and we bless your name, God. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. God, when I can't call you no more, God, I'm asking for a home in your kingdom where I can forever praise your name. These are our blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I thank you. I didn't mean to get emotional. But when I look back to where God brought me from, I couldn't help myself. I'm not asking for, for forgiveness. I'm not making excuses for God's prayer. But I just want you to know that God is awesome. God is great. God is wonderful. He's ever to be praised. So this morning, Redeemer, let us not take life for granted because there's too many things going on in this world that God is not pleased with. So we just ask you to just keep our, each other covered under the blood of Jesus. Our lesson this morning is called to explain. God wants us to explain his word when he gives it to us. Be in a, in, in a situation with God that you know God's word, that you can explain it beyond a shadow of a doubt, because this is what he wants. I'm not going to read the contents of, of the whole lesson this morning. I'm just going to go do a couple of things. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. That's the end, came to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, and Aquila, born in Pontus, lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Now, in reading this lesson, I got, I started pondering. It says, after these things, Paul departed from Athens. And if you were wondering this morning, after what things, what is he talking about? What things did he, what made him depart? And so, and to find out the answer, 
I went back to Acts the 17th chapter. And Acts the 17th chapter explains what happened, why it came to this point. Paul was going trying to find a church. And in his doing so, he and when he started, what it says, Paul left, Paul had left his primary companion, Silas and Timothy, behind in Be oh I can't see in Bera. While he himself traveled south, his his time in Athens while was dramatic was dramatic and you know did not result in planning a church. He was ridiculed by the philosophers for his belief in the resurrection. Even so, he left behind a few new believers. Paul went, and when Paul, what happened is that he, when he went to Athens, he was in hopes of getting a church, but in his speaking, he was teaching. And in his teaching, some of the Jews agreed with Paul's teaching. Some of the Jews liked Paul's teaching, and some didn't. And those that didn't like Paul's teaching, they got upset, and they went against Paul. And because of this, Paul had to run. Paul had to leave that area because of his safety. If he didn't leave, something drastic would happen to him. And so that's the reason why he left. And so in his going, he found a couple of Jews. Aquila and his wife, they were faithful Jews, and they believed in Paul. They believed in what Paul was teaching, and so they helped Paul. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wore for, for by their occupation was, was they were trade makers, tent makers. Now here Paul had this, this ability to make tents, and what they did, they, these two people, Aquila and Priscilla, they, they hide Paul. They hid him from the Jews that was after him in order for his safety. And so Paul joined this couple in a way he, we have not seen at this point in Acts, working at trade for a living. The, he was working, and he knew a little bit about trade. He knew about making tents. But what is supposed to have happened, all three of these were tent makers. A new piece of Paul personality, information about Paul. He was trained to be a rabbi. Paul was supposed to be a preacher by his, by this famous Jen rabbi. And all rabbis are uh, period of uh, teach a skill. I ask that you all bear with me a little bit. For some reason, I'm a little bit nervous. And not only that, my glass needs changing, and I can't see well. But I'm not using this as an excuse. So just please bear with me just a little bit as we do the best that we can with God's word. Making disciples. And Paul, after his, after his tarot there was yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed then to Syrah and with Priscilla and Aquila. Now, Paul stayed in Corinth for 18 months teaching the gospel. Priscilla and Aquila accompanied him, leaving their business in Corinth. Now, these have to have been loyal servants of Paul. For them to leave their business to go to, to, to be with Paul in Corinth, and they did this so that they could explain. Our topic this morning is this, call to explain. And they did this so that they could be able to explain the gospel to those that didn't understand. We have people out here that don't understand the gospel, and if we take our time and help them and explain what we are talking about, then they'll be, they'll get a clear understanding of God and God's word. And he came to Ephesus and s left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Paul talked to the Jews because he wanted them to understand 
who the Lord Jesus Christ was. At this time, at the time of Paul's arrival to Apelius, had a large Jewish population with a well-established synagogue. Paul set out a of Paul set off a riot in Epi in Ep in Ephesus in the process of establishing one of the most notable church in the biblical time. On this third missionary Paul the missionary journey, Paul would spend a better part of three years in the city that the church in Ep was one of the seven or several churches. Now Paul spent this time there teaching the gospel, learning people of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, making a preacher. If, and a certain Jew named Apollo, born at Alexandria and Elalicos, man of mighty in the scripture, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fragrant in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only of the baptism. A power of knowledge of the way of the Lord indicated in that the Christian message had spread or to this great city of Alexander. And it, it had made inroar enrolled into the, a famous Jewish school producing students like Apollo. The result was to be p passionate and fervent when he taught the things of the Lord. Now here what pa Apollo was teaching. Apollo had great knowledge. Apollo was a great speaker, but Apollo was lacking something. And here it says, though Apollo's teaching was done Diligently, he did not yet know the full gospel. The baptism of John was a rich, ritual cleaning of on a, a bias of repentance. It did not include the gift of baptism of the Holy Spirit, something that began at Pentecost. It is one thing to urge, to argue academically, and know that Jesus is the fulfillment of the scripture prophesying a coming Messiah. It is a much deeper transformative experience to receive his gift of the Holy Spirit and to live in his holy power. Apollos was a very a knowledgeable man. He was a diligent speaker. His language was fluent. He could really speak. He could really talk and he could preach. But there was something missing. He could preach as far as John the Baptist. He couldn't go no further. He could not preach on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he didn't know nothing about God. Even though some of us today, we are in that same situation. We can speak Christ, but we do not know Christ. And the thing is, learning who Jesus really is, and this is where Aquila and, and Priscilla was helping Paul. They were teaching, explaining what others didn't understand. And this is what Jesus wants of us. He wants us to explain, not just teach it, but explain it so that we're going to come upon Christian or we're going to come upon people, our non believers, that do not really understand what God is all, what Jesus is all about. And this is where the explanation comes in at. This is where we are called to explain. If we come in contact, contact with somebody that does not know who Jesus is, and we explain to them, and we got to be careful in our explanation. We can't just be a know-it-all. We have to uh, approach them in a manner that doesn't hurt their feeling when we are telling them who Jesus Christ is. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded 
explain unto him the way of God more perfectly. This is what I'm saying. Aquila and Priscilla, they had to tell Apollos how to do it. Apollos did a great job in his teaching. He did a great job in his preaching. He was a great speaker. But the thing is, he had not come in contact with our Lord Jesus yet, so he did not know just who he was talking about. He may have heard of Jesus, but he didn't know Jesus. But after Priscilla and Aquila took him aside, they didn't embarrass him. They didn't yell out in the front of nobody, you not doing it right. They took him to the side and they explained to him about Jesus. And after they explained to him about Jesus, then he became an even better speaker. He became a, 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 ter a terrific preacher. And why he became a better preacher is because he himself know who he was preaching about. When he preached about John the Baptist, he just knew John the Baptist. But he didn't know the depth that came behind John the Baptist. He didn't know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whom John baptized, was the one. He didn't know a Jesus in that manner. But when Priscilla and Aquila took him to the side and told him about Jesus, explaining that the Spirit comes at the day of Pentecost. That's when the Spirit of Jesus started falling on people. And when he started understanding that, he had a better knowledge of Jesus and how to preach about Jesus. So that's what we need. We need to have a better understanding about Jesus. If we're going to talk about him, we have to be certain of what we are talking about. We have to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It just, it's not just going to satisfy us just to hear about him. We have to know about him. We have to know about the, res the death and the resurrection. If we don't know about the death and the resurrection of Jesus, we don't know a whole lot. But once you know the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and know that he died for our sins, that we may be saved, that we may have a right to the tree of life, then you're on the right path of knowing who our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is. You know he, who he is. When you, if you don't know nothing else about him, if you learn about his death and his resurrection, and know that he died for our sin, and he, ro he rose on the third day and sat on the right hand of God our Father to intercede for our sins, then you know something about Jesus. Other than that, we can preach Jesus all day long. But if we don't know those things about him, we don't know who he is. So it pays us best to learn about Jesus, know what those things is about. It says, and the next part says, le leaders of leg legacy, assisting an apostle. Greet Priscilla and Aquila my helper in Christ Jesus, whom have, whom have for my life laid down their own neck. This is what they did. They gave up their, their home. They left their home, and they, they helped Jesus. I mean, they helped Paul. They hid Paul from the crowd that Paul did, wouldn't be hurt. And it seemed for some reason, wherever Paul went, he caused a riot. And the reason for Paul causing these rights, it wasn't a bad reason. The reason for Paul causing these rights where he went is because he wanted to tell about Jesus. He wanted to tell who Jesus was. He wanted to establish a church in the sense so that they could know, they can serve God and know who he is. And because they didn't want to accept that, that's why this, this right was coming about. This is why they had to move him from one place to the next to save him from being real appealed because of the fact that they didn't know Jesus. And if you don't know who Jesus is, sometimes you get upset and you get angry if somebody's telling us something. And the reason for doing that is because we don't know who Jesus is. Because if we truly know who Jesus is, then we will accept somebody's correction with grace. 
we will accept somebody's correction with appreciation. We will we'll appreciate somebody telling us what we don't know about the Lord. And this is what it needs to be done. Those that don't know need to be accepting about what you have to say about the Lord. They need to be willing to accept what you have to say about God. And we just thank God for it this morning. I know I can feel it in myself. I didn't get it right because, like I said, for some reason, I am nervous. But thank you to God through that nervousness. I still knew who Jesus is. And I realized this morning that he didn't make us all perfect. Some of us is going to make mistakes. Even though the mistake is not something we want to make, it happens. But we thank be to God. He sits up and he looks down. And he forgives our mistakes. He does not hold us in judgment. God forgive us for the mistake that we have made. And we just thank God for that this morning. And we're going to come to our conclusion with saying, Father, our church need believers who are committed to ministry, to outreach, to upreach, outreach, and inreach. Grant that we may be wise and knowledgeable and encourageable, encouraged and correct, and to be encouraged and correct. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Woman and man, single and couple, all are called to the ministry of God. And this morning, I want to change it a little bit. We are celebrating Black History Week this month, I mean, Black History Month. And we, every Sunday, we have been doing a little reading. Thank Miss Kim for giving us that, those reading. But this year, because of the pandemic, it didn't happen that way. So if you don't mind, I'd just like to do a little reading on Miss Harriet Tubman. Harriet was born in 1820 and died in 1913. Miss Tubman, a black woman, a black American woman, whose daring rescue helped hundreds of slaves in escape to freedom. She became the most famous leader of the Underground Railroad, which led slaves to freedom. Miss Tubman escaped from slavery in 1849 and went to Philadelphia, PA. She returned 18 months, she returned 18 more times during the 1950s and helped about 300 slaves escape. Ms. Talman never was caught nor never lost a slave on 19 rescue trips forward from the from her capture. She was she um was rewarded there was a reward out for forty thousand dollars for her capture. But being the scheme the keen person she was, she was never caught. She was able to get that many slaves to cap to capture I mean to rescue without being caught. She was called the Black Moses after the biblical figure who led the Jews out of the bondage from Egypt. Our hats goes off this morning to this remarkable late Mrs. Harriet Tubman. We thank you for this morning and we ask God that he'll continue to bless and keep us. As I said, we are going into a pandemic and we're asking God to be with us through it and to keep us covered under his precious blood and realize that only God, just remember, only God can do it. We cannot do it on our own. If we try, we will fail. So what we need to do is to just have faith, be patient, and wait on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, we thank you and we bless you. And we ask that you have a good week and be safe and keep God in all things that you do. Thank you.